you know optimized study in power system has uh, become very significant and uh, we always come across the problems where we need to maximize certain function or minimize certain functions and that is what we call as the optimization there are number of techniques available we talk about the deterministic techniques and uh, nowadays uh, we also have probabilistic techniques like genetic algorithm for psos and uh, gray wolf and clone there are so many optimization techniques available but conventional techniques are generally considered to be the reliable one and the best one why we switch over to the probabilistic te technique is that there are certain functions which sometimes become difficult for us to solve in traditional or uh, these optimization techniques so that is why we move towards that but gans provides that platform which takes into account all the complex functions also like if you have exponential hyperbolic and all these things can be taken care in this and what is more important in this case is that it provides you the solvers you need not to uh, worry about the optimization uh, techniques for example whether you want to go for the particle solver optimization we just need to select a solver what kind of solver we need for the problem that we should have an understanding and we select it and it will work and that solver how it works there is again you know literature available you can study that like we have bragg brown methods we can also have lambda addition method so many methods are being used by this software for optimization purpose now i'll pick up uh, the power system problem first a general problem and then i will uh, give a demonstration that how to write a program in the games the best part in this is that it can also be interfaced with the matlab we can have data in the matlab any standard system that we have i triple standard systems and those systems data can be brought into this games environment and it can run that and then data can be given back to the matlab for plotting and all this purpose so that is the benefit of this games and it has become it has been it is being used since long and uh, and i feel that those who wish who are pursuing and uh, wish to pursue their phd in this area they can have it and it is available student version is available online freely so this games is not g a m e s please note it down so when you search it is g a m s general algebraic modeling system and uh, obviously high level modeling system so it what uh, it has input file then we compile it we use this optimization solver what i told you that we need to stack the solver that solver will solve it because it's just like a function that will solve it and then give it back to this environment and then you generate a output file fine so what is important in this just what are the how to uh, give the input files how to select these uh, solvers and how do we write the output input files any file name abc.gms this is this uh, gms and output file will be any file name dot lst so you can identify by this only so whenever if you can select a folder in that folder the file name gms dot gms means your input file and this will be your ist file lst file will be your output files the extension will be there gms and lsts so i will show you that it will be clear to you also they have different color itself so that is easy to identify also no in games we uh, divide into different sections like first we uh, you know specify the indices on data that means <coughs> the sets and parameters what are the sets and parameters sets are for example if we talk about a normal uh, optimization problem of uh, power system which we call electronic load dispatch which i will solve i will show you so in electronic load dispatch what do we have we have generators generators five generators six generators ten generators set of generators so we define let us suppose i as a generator a set Now is the time? It is working for twenty-four hours, forty-eight hours. So time we can also be time is also set for different intervals. So we need to define those sets. 
the parameters the parameters are the given values certain values which we need to have on the basis of that it is going to calculate to solve the problem so they also need to be specified then listing the names and types of variables we also need to define the variables what are variables and uh, we write the equations so equations <coughs> first we define them and then we uh, write the equations and when we define what are the equation equation can be like your any constraint that can in the form of equation and it can be objective function can also be your equation so that we need to write in gams then we can also have like initial values boundary conditions so those values also need to be specified for example if we talk about uh, the power system the voltage limits we specify that it should be between 0.95 to 1.05 so these bounds need to be specified okay so that it becomes easier for this to understand that it need to solve it we need to explore anything but within those boundary limits and then we need to call the optimization solver those solvers need to be called and we can uh, call it and in case you choose a wrong solver it will let you know that this is the option available you select this one so depending upon the need of the optimization problem the format of input file is flexible flexible in the sense that it is doesn't uh, you know follow a pattern like from up to downwards if you write equations you know first equation then third equation then uh, second equation something of that sort it is not going to cause any problem just like in matlab it works sequentially right if you write something first it will be executed then it goes to next and next next it is not a case here you can write anything and uh, it will automatically pick it, pick it up that is the best part in this you can add any time in between if some certain things you want to introduce at a later later stages without making any you know major changes it can easily accommodate it that is why it is very very flexible it is not rigid then uh, there are certain keywords that i will let you know and uh, it, it it is very easy for this to you know uh, model any complex system i told you whether uh, exponential all these terms they are available here let's take an example for example if we see this uh, function we need to minimize this z where we have three variables x1 x2 x3 x square x1 square x2 square x3 square subject to the condition this these conditions one minus x3 by x2 should be greater than 0 second we can rewrite it in this way x1 minus x2 square plus this this is another condition these are the boundary limits x1 should vary between 0 to 5 x2 is varying between 0 to 3 and this x3 again between 0 to 3 we can start with initial initial guess normally so any any value you can pick up okay but it should be within those limits now here it is important that if certain functions are given because when you read a paper you can find equation written in this form so we can rewrite it why it is important to rewrite that is what is written in this blue color that we can write in this way x2 minus x3 is greater than 0 why there can be certain conditions because once it is varying it will come across as zero and sometime it becomes difficult for this or uh, it will not be able to solve it so it's right if we write this that division by zero condition goes off okay and uh, similarly <coughs> uh there are uh, you know other uh, uh, small changes that you need to make that i will uh, let you know that that can make it easier and this they should not be any problem and uh, while uh, writing it yeah while solving the problem otherwise it can sometime lead to certain errors like we also put up certain uh, tolerance limit so those tolerance limits also need to be there because computer cannot have that exact zero um, uh, you know balancing between uh, maybe to do parameters so that uh, we can stopping criteria should be in such a way that either we fix the iterations or it should meet that 
you know uh, that uh, you can say the conditions or we uh, we can call that a file that we have picked up the tolerance limit this is how it looks like first is a dollar control commands i will let you know what it does then we write comments like if you see the matlab what we do we use this percentile sign it makes a comment here it is a star so that will become a comment so i will show you then it will be clear to you also then the program main code looks like this okay like variable these are the keywords which we discussed variables equations that we write the equations some syntax are there that uh, that can be discussed and uh, the solve last one okay if you see this solve will pick up this in first dollar command here this dollar title it this option sets the title in the page header these are if you do not do it hardly matters but there are some standard formats if you do it fine if you do not do it hardly okay so similarly we can have this uh, you know on sim uh, ref reference then we have this you know, the collection this option controls the collection uh, collection of the cross references for sets and parameters cross references for all the symbols and listing files listing files is also there it tells you each and every step of the solution also that is the advantage it also has some debugging it tells you that at what step there is uh, it is going solution is going infeasible you can make that uh, changes and make it feasible also so that is the advantage that if you solve any any problem you need any algorithm or any technique you do not go you know uh, see the steps at what particular point of time it is going infeasible it gives you that advantage fine so there is this gam tutorial available you can find it out there are some examples also that you can i think it's available so that you can uh, easily assess the input file first i told you this is input file like variables x1 x2 x3 because we have these three x3 three here this the example that we have picked up z is your objective function so these are the variables x1 is also varying x2 is also varying x3 is also varying and z is also varying so the key word here is that is use of variable variable is important to you need to write variables and then we write the different variables we we'll specify the variables i will show you the program then it will be clear to you then z it is also variable that is your function so its objective function it must also be included in the variable because depending upon the value of x z is also going to vary so it is also a variable it also need to be included while defining it then there are certain uh, variables or which are to be kept positive there are certain variable which are binary in nature so we need to specify with that whether it's your positive variable or binary variable when the moment we write it it will pick up those values only like if it is binary so it will pick up 0 and 1 okay so that is what is the advantage with this and objective function value should not be included here as in general, it might take positive negative so it means objective you cannot fix uh positive or negative like if you have to maximize something or minimize something it can have any value for example depending upon input uh, value that you have given it can give you any value of objective function so if you keep it positive only so it may result into infeasible solution sometime for example if i want uh you know a profit maximization problem so i want profit to be maximum i can write it maximum uh, you know positive function but profit can be negative also I mean that means you can win loss so while solving it can win loss negative value means you are in loss okay so if you fix it so it may show that it is not feasible so it can result in so that is why objective function need not to kept in the positive variable semicolon is needed after every equation that we will specify so that it end the list well it is good for the ending purpose just like your syntax views now here equations is another keyword we first of all define equations like con1 con2 con3 it is a constraint one constraint two constraint you write anything 
whether you use alphabet you use numerals no no uh, restrictions on that like you can write uh, eq1 eq2 eq3 well you can write anything just to but you must know it's better that you write some comments so that you understand it what you are writing what does it mean generally is the best practice and this if you see this one con1 dash dash this is syntax it is needed it means it is the equation that has to be solved so dot dot has to be there and x2 minus x3 if you see the uh, problem this one x2 minus uh, x3 greater than 0 so here x2 x3 equal to g is for greater see this is the syntax you can see here on the side both sides equal e, e small e see it uh, yes another important point is that it is not case sensitive whether we write small e or capital e doesn't make any difference so this is for equal to for greater than g for less than both sides equal then l plus minus is same multiplication star division slash exponent double star or you can also write power in bracket that is also another way to read, write, write it so you write these constraint values whatever we function we have z is equal to square sqr this is what i am telling you that it has that those features available like exponential and all these things absolute value you want to calculate so you just, but these not, uh, you know syntax uh, notations you need to search uh, because it may not be clear to you in the very beginning so once you start solving it for square what to do sqr x1 if you do not uh, want to use sqr x1 so you can write x1 star x1 that is also square okay so once you do it then we <coughs> have these uh, you know well, first we define equation then we write these equations okay and then we write objective function and uh, semicolon is needed at the end for each and every section after every section we need semicolon that i will let you know but these are syntaxes that you need to understand mostly we use these equal to greater than small, less than and uh, plus minus is similar multiplication is similar just like normal matlab you will find very similar to that matlab upper bound and low bound like i told you for example we need to set a maximum limit of generation minimum limit of generation you can do it in this way you can write in the form of equation also so dot up is up for upper value dot l is for the lower value like x1 variable upper value 5 lower value 4 this is what you can fix up okay so dot l lower bound dot up upper bound dot l the level value meaning put your value up there that is what is the dot l so it will give you solution in from the dot l dot m is the marginal value what you call marginal price and uh, or incremental change in that particular variable so it is generally used for uh, you know uh, if you see the incremental cost in uh, those who uh, studied economic load dispatch so we talk about economic incremental cost so what is that cost because when it comes for the bidding purpose or any other issue so there we need to find the incremental cost marginal value so dot m gives the marginal value straight away in you need not to write a separate code or separate equation for that but simply writing if you want for example uh, the marginal value of the cost of a generator so simply write cost dot m you have pg1 or P, uh, generator 1 or generator 2 so you get that cost so you immediately get okay if we want to increase the generation of generator number 2 how much cost it has to in a by simply write dot m only so it calculates automatically this model this is a statement that we need to write it is used to name our model like test is one program name okay all within that slash all means it is solving all the equation you can write separate equation also like I, if i want to solve one equation which which equation i want to solve simply of obj i can write simply obj in bracket but then it will solve this one only it will not solve con1 con2 con3 these are another equations there 
these are the, the, the uh, separate equations so all means it will solve all the equations which are there in the program then we have option limit row limit column this is for the limiting purpose where we want to suppress the output while debugging so this you user you do not use hardly matters this is for simplification so that we don't have long output files so then you write the solve statement install solve test test means your program solve this test using nlp non linear programming linear programming any minimizing z what is z z is your objective function this is what is the statement you need to write fine right? once it solve it uh, you know write it it will automatically use that solver and give you the solution so you can have this minimizing this function this is what is the statement solve model name test using solver type this one minimizing maximizing there are two ways we we do it objective variable jo bhi aapka hai that you can write z cost whatever you want to write okay and these are solvers there another solvers available this is just you know few of uh, solvers which i have mentioned here linear programming non linear programming mixed integer uh, M M I N L P. this would be minlp sorry mixed integer is needed particularly in power system we need to have mixed integer because we have if you talk about unit commitment problem we generators status also need to be there which is binary in nature and we have uh, generation which is continuous so we need to have a solver which takes into account both of these variables so we have mixed integer that purpose mixed integer no linear programming relaxed r we certain uh, what happens when we use r it gives certain relaxation like if uh, at certain point of time for example <clears throat> if total generation is not equal to load that should be there that is equality constraint and if it is you know let us put 0.5 something of that sort or maybe some other uh, your voltage variation slightly it relaxes it so it it is giving you solution close to that so generally or maybe a status of uh, units particularly we fix up some variable of uh, uh, status of where it's on or off and if you fix this uh, you know am i you know p am i nlp so unless uh, those units are on or off it will give you the exact value but if you use r so sometime you will find that uh, generators whether they are uh, switched on or switched off despite that they are going to give you Certain values, so it will not give you the exact unit commitment solution, but relaxed solution where we find that some certain other units can also, you know, uh, give some power at certain certain point of time where they should be uh, off in actual. So it is giving you relaxation to the boundaries conditions particularly. This is how your uh, output file look like. Wait, I will I will demonstrate and then it will be clear because it's not uh, uh, clear to you here. This is the way we write it, and uh, the directive pool refers to the fact that analytical gradients for the nonlinear models have been generated by the games. Means the file which is there, they let you know that how many uh, equations are there, how many variables are there, non-zero elements are there, how much time it has taken, execution time. So these all these features are. specified by this sometimes you write you find in papers this much time has been taken for simulation so you can get it from here so this time and everything uh, how many questions how many variables have been solved so those sort of information is provided by this because otherwise you need to count it directly gives you how many variable you are used objective value it is going to specify we will see it then this is how the equation lower level value dot lo dot l dot up dot m which we dot m this is a marginal value if we talk about this this one this is the marginal value so 
this is basically a multiplier those who have uh, uh, studied about this you know bidding strategies they understand that a particular generator if they want to bid in the market they decide it on the basis of the marginal value because they wanted to know that how much cost is involved to generate the next unit of power so if it is 10 rupees so they will bid for 12 or 15 rupees they cannot bid it at 8 rupees otherwise they will be lost but how do we do, how do they know that how much is the cost so they get it from the marginal value okay, how much cost is uh, you know uh, take uh, involved in generation the next unit so we can directly get it so we need to uh, write it separately that is what i mean to say this example now i will not take up this example let's go to <coughs> straight away to the gans environment and then it will be clear to you this is one basic problem simplest problem that i have picked because it's easy to understand for the process to problem uh, for people minimizing this cost we have this abc cost coefficients pi is the generation by different units fine right? and uh, here what is important is that i have taken only the pi i have not taken into the uh, time i can also have pi comma t one unit at one time second time third time fourth time second unit at different time so that that can be done that i will show you the pro in programs so this is the way you can write but for simplicity i have kept it without time only let's keep it like this subject to the condition total generation should be equal to demand plus loss loss if you calculate fine uh, otherwise uh, in power flow automatically it will take care and uh, Second constraint that we have that total generation should not be uh, greater than maximum or less than minimum. That is what is the load dispatch problem that we have, and we need to minimize the cost and those conditions. Now, how do we write code? This is what we discussed earlier. First is the set. We need to define the set. Generating units. I will define set I. How many units? that i will specify i will show you how to do that if you are taking time take time also so this is the way you can define like in some of the problem a generating unit of this company the company is also a set company a b c generating unit of uh, company a first unit second unit third unit so different sets can be there time can also be there so you can have number of sets defined in a problem then you have the parameters the parameters are the given values like abc coefficients they are given to you demand should also be given to you then also you will be able to solve generation limits should also be given to you fine so these are the given values demand the demand uh also there are many demands are there are many demands there are many generators there is the many demands ha yes 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 so can we make one set of demand cannot be a set ah yes what we can do is we can scatter this demand see what happens when we say why we are making generators total demand of the system when we you know solve it it will be solved it will be solved based on the power flow constraints within the power flow constraints at which bus that demand is it will automatically pick it up you can pick it up see that is that program i will show you separately so what we do there is but demand is given we whenever we solve a load dispatch problem or power flow study demand is given unless we do not know the demand how can we solve it but generation is to be decided fine ha huh. that is why it is uh, uh, taken as uh, set and we cannot take it as a uh, set okay it is given already so it is whichever is given yeah it should be known that is a parameter then comes the variable so real power generation p that is the only variable here along with the cost and i am taking this problem only simplest one right so the cost is a variable it is going to vary and at the same time your real power generation is also 
हमें ये बात नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज टू डिफाइन द इक्वेशन यू डिफाइन नेम द इक्वेशन एन इक्वेशन इक्वेशन वन इक्वेशन टू इक्वेशन थ्री इक्वेशन फोर कुछ दोन इक्वेशन आर यू राइट दो राइट दो इक्वेशन here first this equation this equation and here constraints also you can write in the form of equation also upper bound lower bound can also be given that both way you can do both ways then you write this solve statement the first model model i uh, that is skipped model and then model uh, solve all where we write the all i uh, yes that part is uh, this one test model name of the program and all that will solve all the equations after you write this model then you have this solve statement fine and you can pick up any solver if like generally linear programming non linear programming if it is not going to solve by that it will ask for that and then you can display the results now what is important in this case is that we can interface with the matlab so i will show you that matlab part later but let's go back to uh, the coding part first right so how to call these function from the matlab what we do is we write program in the games we will not specify the data there we will write code in the matlab and data will be available in the matlab only the a simple command in matlab is needed which will pick up the data from the matlab it will solve in the games and it will give back to uh, the matlab and then here we need to interchange these files for interfacing purpose so that is a simple procedure given on the internet that how do you interface a games software with the matlab software so two files need to be exchanged and in latest version i think it is automatically updated there is no need to interface Later version which are there or uh, update uh, games, so you can directly write those uh, commands and it will automatically run it. Otherwise, if you see the older versions uh, of the, the MATLAB and games, there you need to interchange two files uh, of MATLAB with games and games of MATLAB, and by simply doing that, setting a path and it is going to interface it. Now let us take this. Uh, this is symbol for. Uh, games this is this symbol if you see it if you open this game this looks like this and i can open a new program just like any other software and if you write you know star this is uh, for the command purpose only i can simply write eld program render it again you can write these this this is the way it is writing in comments only fine so once you do it the next step is we'll go back to this this one we need to define the set so you define set after a small hardly matter i told you it's not case sensitive set i any set i okay and uh, this is the way it uh, we need to enter data within this these bracket like slashes like if there are let us put three units so i will write one space 1 comma 2 comma 3 three units or another way of writing this is that i can write one star Star three, ah, because there are thirty units, so we can we need write one, two, three, four up to this. Yes. So this is one. This is the way we need to write. Okay. So once you write these sets, just for separation, I again write a comment. Let us find uh, separate it out. The next part is your parameters. Parameters. Okay. So in parameter. what we do parameters if you write parameters see this is what again if the parameters 
So you need to write parameter with any uh, of the uh, parameter again. Like I will write a. Now, for example, this is a, and I need to write a i. Why a i? Because a is for different units. So I will write it cost coefficient. I will specify the data within this one space. Well, for the first unit, let us suppose it is hundred comma two space two hundred comma three space three hundred. So if there is one space, two space hardly matters. We don't bother about that. Okay. Another way of writing this is now. AI, then I can write BI. The capital is there. Hardly, I told you it's not case sensitive. Again, you can write cost coefficient similarly. Of one is n and two space fifteen. Enter the space. But the difference in A and B is that either you can write here, then you need to write comma. If you go to next line, there is no need to write to comma. So you can write in both way. Fine. So A B C. If you write one, whatever value you put up, that is for first. Unit the second I third I, okay. Similarly, I can have C I cost coefficient. Unless you write this, you know, slash, it will be uh, uh, previous one. It will pick up as you take it as comments only. The cost coefficient. Okay? So again, you can write one space zero point zero zero one zero zero one comma two space zero point zero five comma three space zero point eight. This is you can specify A B C. What else is there? Demand, ED. This is your demand. You can specify, for example, it is three hundred megawatt or any other units. Anything else we have? We can also specify Emax, Emax I. This is also a way to write max unit value for each unit. So I can write again maximum generation limit one specifies two hundred comma second unit is let us suppose one fifty comma third unit is hundred as so you can write. You can write in, in very similar way. I mean also let it be twenty fifteen and ten. These are the parameters. Anything else we have in our problem? So then you write semicolon. In set also we need write semicolon after every keyword. These yeah, are keyword. Set is keyword. Parameter is keyword. Variable is keyword. Fine. Once you do it, and again just for separation, you can write a comment. Okay. Next, what I need to define now? 
वेरिएबल्स ठीक है सो यू डिफाइन द वेरिएबल वेरिएबल्स इट्स बेटर टू राइट वेरिएबल्स अदरवाइज वॉट यू कैन डू इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेरिएबल कॉस्ट कॉमा वेरिएबल इज द वे यू कैन राइट और इफ यू राइट वेरिएबल्स देन देर इज नो नीड टू राइट दिस वेरिएबल विद ईच एंड एवरी वेरिएबल एंड इट इज द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस रादर good practice because you have number of variables so it is not advisable to write with each and every okay and uh, once you have this cost <coughs> and this you can define first and if you come to know that now i i need to have another variables so whenever you know it you write it down in between for example if i to add uh, introduce a b c d e f Coefficients also add 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 them hardly matters. Now what is next is equations. Equations you define equations. I I O B J is one equation. O B J is objective. You can write anything. It's not fixed. Then you can write E Q one. I prefer this E Q one so that it's understood first equation. Then you can have E Q two, like if this is if you let us suppose this is demand power balance, you can write comments with that also. Okay. Now here when we write equations, the certain equations will be there which is dependent upon certain variables. So that I will let you know. So like if it depends upon I, so I can write within bracket equation one bracket I. So once we have we write the equations. we can introduce it later and uh, let us write another equation eq3 and let's stop it here once we write these equations how we need to write the equations one define equation first then you write the equations Uh, you have first equation is objective objective dot dot this is the syntax okay so objective dot dot now what is the objective is cost with this function simple cost fine right? summation i very common to n So I can write cost equal to e. This is the way it need to be written. Cost is equal to. Okay, this is syntax we already have uh, studied there earlier. Uh, sum, sum of all the units. Sum bracket i. Sum of all the i. Comma. Okay. ai plus bi star b bracket i ai plus bpi plus bi star bi star You need to multiply two times, okay? And uh, you close the bracket and semicolon with each equation. So summation of all this A I B I B I. First equation. Then you write E Q one dot dot. What is the next equation? P D. Is equal to the PD AP generation. It can be done either side. Is equal to some 
I, comma, P bracket I. Some of the generation loss, for example, forget about loss right now. You can calculate it in load flow study, it will automatically because I haven't included the power flow constraints there. It's simply low dispatch problem. So there is no constraints as for line limits uh, and voltage limits are concerned. Next is PQ2. Dot, dot. I want P min I. Minimum should be less than okay, great. Value of the P, P min I should be less than the PI. Okay. Similarly, I can write for maximum as equation number three. P max, we need to write exactly the same P max, P min, whatever it is written. It P max should be. Greater than the PI. Now, one thing is to be noted here. If you see these equations two and three, on left hand side and right hand side, they are dependent upon i. So I need to include that i in the equation. Equation two i. It can be time dependent also sometimes. So this becomes t. So when you define equations in e defining equation, there also you need to include i. Uh, two, two, two and three only. If you do not do it, it will tell you. This is what you need to do. It will point out at that point only. We will take uh, intentionally introduce some error, and uh, then we'll see that how to find out that. This is the condition. What else is, is anything? Anything needed? I think. This is what we have. Then we have. Model statement. Model. Now we need to save it. Uh, right now it is untitled underscore one, so I can save it. For example, let's save it. Uh, save as you can save anywhere. For example, test. Keep it test only. Double test slash all. Okay, model statement. Now, what is needed next? All statement. Solve what? Test. Name of the program. Using this. You can write down, you note know, down, write it down somewhere. This one, solve model name using solver name, minimizing that function. So test, uh, so sorry, solve test using LP, for example, linear programming, minimizing cost. Okay, and the last you can have display. Display, you can write cost dot l. Cost dot l. Cost dot m. Cost dot up. Cost dot lo. Whatever you want, you can do it. Comma p dot l. Okay. So once you solve it, then this is the command here for run, running purpose. This one, yeah, you run it. It says, if you see, this is a file that LST file. 
I told you LST file, error message is there. Just see error message. In uh, endogenous operator uh, not allowed in linear models. Means you can use LP. Now you solve it to your optimum solution. If you see on this side, this is the, the solution. This is the cost here we are getting. Now we have displayed it. You have displayed it here. This is the cost 4955 generation first unit 290 10. 300 on the basis of its cost. Now if you go up here, you can write this equation number objective. At each and every step how it is calculated, it will show you these values, upper low, uh, low values, lower value, marginal value, or different equations. So what I mean to say is that there is a complete, you know, uh, history of uh, the solution available. You can find it out. Sometimes it may lead to infeasible solution. So if you want to see infeasible, so you go to the solve equation, you will find that equation number one is not feasible. For example, if both generation is not able to meet the load, so it will show you infeasible solution there. And now, for example, I intentionally do this. It is giving some error. Let's see what is the error. So once you see the error, it shows here symbol neither initiated nor assigned 141. Now you can see this this star here, four stars. This is the error message 141. This is here. You will find it. There is some symbol nor neither started nor assigned. So you need to read this error here what it means and accordingly change it that means the division equation number three and division number three that we have defined is different and there is no symbol defined it is not dependent upon unit psi so we need to include that i so it is point you just need to read this lst file only wherever there are four stars that means it's error but the error is there only if you see the solve statement and display they by default has some uh, they, they will show the error automatically if there is error somewhere else and if you remove this, solve it again, we can get a solution. Now, what is important in this case is that uh, there is a possibility that it can be interfaced with. What I need to do is. The two statements lib include dollar lib include met out lib include met out cost dot l lib include met out p dot l and p depends upon i these are the two i whichever you know variable you want to get displayed in matlab you can write that in a sequence I will show you some program and that will be clear. And then come to MATLAB environment. Here, this is one, one command that we need to write games underscore output standard. This is for standard output only. If you don't write hardly matter any difference. But this is the command that you, it will be, uh, you will be available in many of the uh, programs. Games underscore output is equal to STD, standard output. So it will show you the complete values. Now, just like your MATLAB program, I need to write cost and P, two variables that, that were there, which I showed you here that this is what we need to uh, display in MATLAB. So 
I'll cos p gems and the name of the program I need to write it is test. Now it is also important that you save this program in the same directory. Now, where there is a that MATLAB program also. So I can save it. It's in hybrid model. So I know where my program is. So I am saving it uh, in this because it is under this uh, folder. So I have saved it here. So now if I run it, I get these results here. These results are displayed here. Fine. Now we can have dot dot flow programs also. <coughs> dot flow program that I will I will demonstrate one program. So what I mean is once we have this, so you can have these in variable, we can find this P. That is easier to work in MATLAB. This you already must have done. If not now, so like if I wish to plot it, so I can plot it generation of different units like this, and then you can you know cut uh, paste it accordingly. Generation. So uh, this figure you can have. You can define the axis on x side, y on the side, and uh, similarly, there are many more uh, data uh, that can be easily worked in MATLAB environment. So it gives you an ease that the data can be transferred easily. Now I'm just uh, going through very fast now. Now there is one way. This is what we have done. No dispatch problem. Data has been given in GAMS itself. Another way is because here we are not considering that where are the generators at which bus they are so it becomes difficult because the problem of research is not of this type problem of research uh, generally will have to be tested on a standard system where we have you know real power limit reactive power limits then we have you know voltage limits line flows ambient ratings everything so that data needs to be specified that can be done in gams also but it becomes tedious to solve it there so what we do is that we keep data in MATLAB, bring that data in, uh, you know, GAMS environment, and then run it. So we will not give any data in the GAMS. So just I'll just show you the program, and then it will be. I think it should be clear to you. If you see this program, this one here, I am specifying this nodes and branches, nodes, the standard system. Then we have alias statement. Up, usko chodo. This is for uh, like uh, J and J1. They are can have similar values. If J is varying up to 30, so J1 will also be up to 30. Parameters. So this is what we have defined. Parameters. PG max, PG minimum, PG max one, QG, P demand, Q demand. Whatever variables you have, you define them. So parameter you define them. But parameter value will not be specified here. They will be given. MATLAB. Variables you define just like your normal program. Upper bound, lower bound, you can specify here also. Equations where we are defined. All these equations, equation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, depends upon your program, which problem you have picked up. The simplest problem that we did, it can have a big, big problem. Number of constraints can be there in a the system. These are some normal program that we have. Now, this is what we need to understand. There, here, these are line. Uh, flows equations here we need to use that incidence matrix and these equations can be used normal uh, uh, sending and power uh, power receiving and power real power reactive power and this is how we can be this is a programming part but we are doing like uh, cost function limits like uh, these limits are specified you can see the limits here in very similar way you need to specify and here also, model statement, solve statement. Then you need to write this 
that lib include metout command so that it takes it to matlab fine and display so pehle dekho that is i told you it's flexible humne display it can be written later on it can be written before and also theek okay? hai so this is one program on uh, which i have done web data is not specified here now where is the data now now you go to matlab this is a matlab environment this is the data that i have specified this you must have seen or it is available in hadi sadat book or anywhere in mat power also we have 24 bus system because you can see 24 here and uh, we have defined like first column specifies your bus number second your uh, voltage angle third your generation this is the way you can specify all these line data like line 1 connected to 2 this is first is r x Shunt. This is one point seven five is the MVA limit line data. Just like your, if you have studied that, if you are not studied, so just for the uh, sake of idea only, you can take up some problem from uh, Hadi Sadat or Matlab Bad Power. Small problems on load flow that will make you understand how to take the data. This is how we, how we specify the data in Matlab. Now we also need to write. that in this case which particular column we specifying r which is specifying x of a line so for that we write a separate function like if you see this particular command pg min bus 5 fifth column means in matrix bus fifth column is your pg minimum here bus 10 means 10th column in bus matrix will be your qg max this is how you need to specify it and these values of p qg max qg max i am writing here as output and if you see these variables these uh, parameters these parameters they are the same parameters which we have specified here in pg max pg minimum pg they must be specified it means whenever gams is has solving any problem whatever parameters are there its value should come from the matlab so in matlab i need to tell very clearly that which column is which particular parameter once you define it then it is ready to solve now another simple uh, uh, you know function that we need to use the y bus y bus formulation has to be there because then only it it, it, it solves it okay it has to be there so this is standard program you can get it if you uh, i can give you my id i can uh, share it with you also so there is no need to change the vibus program it's simple program as it is data you specified the data how to uh, you know make gams understand that which particular column is of uh, particular parameter that you specify in the function so if you see this data bus and line we have taken two matrix bus matrix and line matrix from these matrices only it will specify that first is uh, your demand second is your voltage limit mv limit all these things can be done and then we have this this small program this don't go into you know uh, don't be bothered about ki this is a large thing written it's not uh, needed it's simply commands only here this is one simple command where we can get the file it will call the ask the file ki which data is to be picked so i can pick up that data where i have specified here the same command data file which i i just show you that because it it also need to be because it's a matlab now it has to be in sequence so data uh, is the function here it will pick up the data uh, file from there then if you see the next it is uh, y bus also uh, it is y bus for data then y bus after that abc coefficient all these things that you can read up these are f print they are for printing purpose only gams and output standard this is what i i wrote in uh, last program and i showed this was standard output only and here the program that i have written this one gams this is the name of the project uh, your uh, program there in gams environment in games environment i have written two, two programs here this is project_cg2 if you see the program name here 
project underscore cg2 so the same program has to be written in this way if you see here i i would cos p games test so i have solved test the equivalent load dispatch problem so i have simply written the name of the program similar way you need to write you can directly write it here and then you can specify this pg max pg minimum all these input variables input parameter rather i should say and here on this side it is the output and these input should be in the you know all these input parameters are if you note it down pg max pg max 1 pg min pg maximum they are all value the parameters here in the same sequence and if you see the display here whatever we have displayed here pgn pqgn the same will be on the output side here so input parameter will be specified on this side output on this side rest it is you know simply for displaying purpose baki whatever we are writing downward it's not a part of the program this is the only command that you need to write just like the command that we have written uh, we did in matlab earlier this one simply but the only thing was that we need to write pick up the data we need to use the y bus and then use this command so that is what is done there and it has been written such a way that i get line flows from which line to which line that so once i solve it it will ask for the file from where to pick the data because there is one initial two commands are for picking up the file only get file i pick up this file because this data is here that to i show you the data to pick up the data there are two programs here basically so again it is going to compile and you find that this is the result shown here in the matlab environment you can display also fine so once you do this rest variables is in the workspace now you can plot whatever you want to plot now the important point in this case is that how to find out whether solution is feasible or not so what we do is there are some files mat data dot gdx to mat sol dot gm these files need to be copied and uh, this is one one small thing that you need to learn in document there is one game directory automatically it will form when the moment you install the software game directory will be created in game directory you need to copy these files in program because whatever solution we have obtained in uh, in matlab that data need to be transferred to the games environment now in game directory we need to put that data after solution once we do that now your games program can run now you run the, because there is no data specified but now we have put up the data after solving it in the matlab because matlab solved it by calling games now we need to put it back in the games directory and then solve it now if it gives you optimal solution it means your program is right if it gives infeasible solution means it is solving but solution is not feasible so that is what we need to see it means the solution what we have proposed yeah program it is running perfectly what okay. it so what problem with the, the problem that we were discussing that we can always have that you know fact device is included in this we just need to have uh, the mathematical equations for the fact any fact device what's your tcpr you know uh, statcom upfc s triple sc whatever it is you just need to write mathematical equations and we need to specify you know the power balance equations and the power injection equation include those equations there only specify at which bus it is there and uh, once you solve it that what uh, reactive power reactive power which is being supplied by that will be automatically taken care in the load flow program and you can get the solution and it in fact it can also contribute to the cost because the moment it change the p it change the cost also so whatever is your objective function accordingly it will give you the solution so i think uh, uh, though for many of you because unless you do it yourself it's slightly uh, difficult to understand but at least this gas program which i have uh, shown you uh, economic load is problem that you can solve and particularly for matlab interfacing there is 
resources available on internet also you simply type gams interfacing with matlab or simply uh, download that software also so gams website is uh, is there so the link will uh, give you i think student version up to 30 30 50 variables so that is sufficient for you because there are no uh, i think we have used solely two variables only so 30 variables large so it will it will solve take care of your problem so matlab simulink can also be included that is the addition that they have done and in fact fuzzy and all these things also are also being you know taken care by uh, the games now up in the latest version that is there so uh, this will make again very comprehensive uh, tool to solve the problem so i think uh, i would like to stop here so if you have any query any doubt please you are most welcome to ask